three. Hello, everyone. You are listening to the C Squared podcast with Corey and Curtis. Today, we are going to be talking about specifically growing your Instagram, how to get more followers, how to get more engagement, and really boost that up. Because let's be real, Facebook, totally a dinosaur. Instagram, not exactly new, but definitely an area where people struggle and where there's a lot more potential for your band to grow. So that's what we're focusing on today, different tips, different tricks on how to get organic, and that's that's the key here, organic growth on your Instagram. So, yeah, so I mean, like the key thing is a lot of bands will try to start off with growing their Instagram by doing stupid ads and stuff. So, like, I mean, the, th the thing is, is like when you're starting off your Instagram account, obviously you want to get a bunch of followers and stuff, but you don't want to start getting paid ads until certain things are in place. Can you kind of go over what that is first, Corey, before we get on to the organic part? Okay, so uh, there are certain people out there who will advise that you run ads um, to just encourage people to follow you. And that is basically just buying followers. And the problem with that is that it is horrifically apparent when you've done this yeah. because nobody will actually be engaging with your posts. Nobody's gonna like anything, nobody's gonna comment. You're gonna have 100,000 followers and like two likes. And everybody knows what that means. It's not a secret anymore. There's really no way to hide it. And really it just screws up everything that you're doing. So when you go to actually run an ad and promote your merch, promote a tour, something along those lines, you're not gonna reach any of the people that you actually need to reach because you've completely screwed your algorithm. So starting off there, don't do that at all. That it, and unless you actually have all of the pieces in place for your band, you shouldn't be running ads in the first place. And that's why I always say running ads should be your last step. And yeah. by that, I mean, you need to have all of your social media in place. You need to have your website set up. You need to have a shop set up. You need to have your YouTube. You need to have some videos. You need to have quality content. You need to have some sort of a fan base that you can promote to. And honestly, you should probably be making a little bit of money off of your music before you try running any ads on it. Otherwise your ads are gonna fall flat and you're not gonna reach the right people. Yeah, well, one other thing I wanna point out too, just on that is that it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, uh, how many followers you have if you're not getting any engagement. Yep, nobody gives a shit if you have 100,000 followers and one like. Yeah. Because that means that all of your followers are fake. Even if yeah. they're real people, they're still fake followers. I just want to go into this into that for just a brief second. I know we covered that briefly a couple of weeks ago, but one key thing that I think people need to realize is even if you look like you have a hundred thousand followers, most people can spot a fake from a mile away nowadays. It used to be probably would be it used to be the case whereby like you know if you had like a hundred thousand followers, it would look good to people and it would look like social proof. But nowadays it's like if no one's interacting with your post, it's pretty suspect as a general rule. Um, so the key thing, so like when you're trying to, like, especially with Instagram as well, another thing that I've noticed is a lot of people will start trying to go for engagement by using hashtags as a first thing. Now, hashtags can be good, but they can also create a lot of fake engagement too. Do you know what I'm saying when I, what I mean? Yeah, which is why you want to use relevant hashtags to what you're doing. The other thing is that can happen is if you overuse hashtags. So I know that the limit is something like 30 hashtags per post. Yeah. You don't actually want to use the limit anymore. Um, an algorithm change that happened um, with people who use a lot of hashtags and they're always the same hashtag. Now what can happen is called a shadow ban where mm. Instagram will just limit you showing up in those hashtag feeds because it's marking you as spam. Cause you're always, you know, hashtag metal music in every single thing that you do along with a million other hashtags, you're going to get limited now. So using relevant hashtags and a good mix of big hashtags and small hashtags. So you don't wanna always go for the hashtags that have a million uses, and you don't wanna always go for the ones that have like a hundred uses. You wanna use a mix of both to reach a broader audience and have a much less chance of getting that, that shadow ban. 
Well, in addition to that too, there's also certain tags that seem to only bring out the spam bots too. So I think you kind of got to test. Yes. Can you go and over that? So a lot of the video tags will bring out spam bots. Um, yeah. So you'll see things like promote it on and then yeah. a tag. Yeah. I hate those. So that's a lot of video tags. And honestly, just block those as spam. Um, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean the hashtag is bad, but if all of your comments are clogged up with that, then, I mean, it just looks like fake engagement yet again. So just block all those as you see them come in. Um, I actually have a question on that because someone had tried to say at one point, I can't remember who it was, that if you get those type of, that type of engagement, like the fake engagement with the promoted DMS type shit, that that actually boosts you up in the algorithm. That's not true, is it? Someone had tried to tell me. That. And even if it does boost you up in the algorithm, the moment anybody takes a look at your feed and actually looks at your feed, so that's going to be a record label, a booking agent, anybody in the industry that you want to work with is going to look at that. And if that's all they see, then, I mean, chances of them working with you are probably slim. Yeah. So, okay. So, like, just just to wrap up on, on the different hashtags. So, you say don't use a ton of, ton of big hashtags. Keep it under 30. And mix it up with I limit myself to about 10 and I mix it up so that okay. I'm not using the hashtag at the like every single time using the same hashtags. Okay. Um, because every single time you're not going to be posting the same thing. So why are you using the same hashtags? This so is... mix it up and uh, I try to keep it at 10. Okay. And then what about using like a specialty ha hashtag? Like, let's say, for example, if it was a C squared podcast as the hashtag. That's actually not a bad idea because it, um, for people who are already your fans or somebody who just discovered you, it's a yep. good way to really filter your content um, and content related to you for people who want to learn more. So obviously your feed is filtered content, but anywhere else that people have tagged you, live videos, live shots, that kind of a thing, they can do hashtag such and such band and bring up all this content that they can really dig into. So hashtagging your, yourself, not a bad idea. Cool, okay, wasn't sure on that. Okay, so then the next thing on Instagram is, okay, so there's differing opinions on this. I just wanna hear yours, I have my own, um, but, frequency of posting some people say you should only do it once a month some people say once a week some people say every day uh, some people say multiple times a day um, I know there's not really a definitive answer to this because there's different things work for different people but I just kind of want to have you touch on that briefly so the general rule is no more than twice a day before you start getting dinged by the algorithm as a spammer um, you will see your engagement go down. Once you hit that third post of the day, you'll start to see your engagement dri uh, to drop. Um, obviously, this is not, you know, 100% of the time, but it does happen. I try to stay within, you know, once a day for people, stick with once a day, you know, no less than five times a week, four times a week, somewhere in there every other day. If you can't manage it one a day, but one a day is probably the best route to go. Yep. Um, obviously, when it comes to stories, you can do two or three of those if you really want to do more than one post a day. But when it comes to feed posts specifically, one a day, no more than two. Once you hit three a day, you start to see everything drop down. Cool. So just to the stories thing, you, you've seen a limit to how many of those actually before you get ding? Because I've heard some people have done like... Some people do like 20 a day. So that's why I'm just asking about it. I haven't seen a ding on stories, but I mean, you can test it, test yep. it. And if you can see where your fans start to drop off. And if it's at three, don't post a fourth. Yeah. But also one, once again, when you're doing the test, make sure you do more than one day because it could just be a pure fluke at the same time. Um, how many days would you say like three? Hmm? I said one day is not a test. So what would a test be in terms of marketing, in terms of time? Give it a couple of weeks. Weeks? Okay. Yeah, a couple weeks. of weeks of testing things out. Okay. And don't change too much when you're testing things. If yep. you're in there and you're changing something every day, you're not getting good results for your yep. test because you, you <laughs> don't actually know what's working. So keep things consistent for a week or two. 
and then use those results to tweak your plan. So just to make sure that we're clear, because I don't know if everybody's going to quite know because they might not have studied marketing like you or me. So when you're saying consistency, like keep it consistent for your posts, you're, mean, you're meaning like still post or, or text post or you know, uh, video post and not really changing it up as the test, correct? No, not necessarily. Um, okay, what I mean, is you can try different types of posts and I wouldn't do the same type of post every day just as a test. What I mean is testing your strategies. So okay. three okay. stories doesn't necessarily mean what their content is, but three stories and then do my, my followers drop off at the fourth Sure. that kind of thing. So test strategies. And you can also see what types of posts perform the best just yeah. by going back and seeing what has gotten the most engagement. Cool. Okay. So I'm just trying to think if I got any other questions on that part before we move to the next one. I don't think so. So let's talk about, okay, so the actual growth part of things, there's the post and then there's the growth. So now, you know a little bit more about the algorithm than I do, I believe. Um, so can you kind of explain how you can get your posts moving up in the algorithm? Is there like a, a certain trick or way that you're aware of? It's going to be based on your follower count and your engagement. So you're going to show up more the more people want to see you. Fair enough. And that, that, that depends upon the engagement level. Yeah, that imp it definitely is pretty hefty on the engagement level. Okay, so then next thing. So one common question that I get, um, I haven't really been able to find a definitive answer to it. Maybe you do, you know it. Um, so text length. Um, I've seen some people say that they get really good results when they post longer text. And I've seen other people post, say that they get it when they post less text. Do you know if there's a definitive answer to this? Because I'm not sure. I tend to air on the side of longer text yeah same. um to really you know just use up the character count and everything engage yeah. people with your band because people who are on your feed want to know more about you but yeah. again this is another strategy to test yeah. which one you're going to which one your fans like do your fans like having a shit ton of text or do they not so that's just a strategy you're going to have to test yeah, and at the same time, I also wouldn't just do long text just for the sake of long text either. I mean, you got nothing. It has actual value. Yeah, if if you don't have anything to say, don't don't sit there sitting there all day trying to think of something to say. So okay, so text we've already talked about. So now next thing is um, engagement with. So I know you were always saying that the best thing to do is to go and sort by, or sorry, go into the hashtags, and then comment based upon most recent, right? I So what I do is I will type in a hashtag. Let's just say I am going to metal memes and I'll do hashtag metal memes. Yes. And it'll bring up a feed of metal memes. I don't focus on the top ones. I focus on the newest ones. And I'll go in and I'll comment something that is actually you know relevant to what is going on. So, I mean, a lot of the mean things will say, they'll be focused on a specific band and they'll be like, oh my God, this is so funny. My favorite song by that band is blah, blah, blah. Just something along those lines. Or if somebody, if you're, you know, hashtag Portland metal concerts or whatever, just yeah. some sort of something like that. Oh, I saw that band at this time on this date, whatever. It was an amazing show, blah, blah, blah. So going in and sorting hashtags by new, you're going to get a lot more engagement with your comment because your comment's probably going to be first, second, right at the top. And yep. so you're going to show up at the top. Okay. So I avoid the, um, the top or the top posts because you're just going to get buried. Because they're so popular. Exactly. They're so popular. And then another thing that happens. So say you're, let's do hashtag battle vests because everybody loves to show off their battle vests. Okay. And you can say you can go through people's feed and be like, oh, that's super awesome that you have such and such band. I love that band on your battle vest or whatever. And people are going to get super stoked that a band is actually paying attention to their feed and saying something meaningful to them. So it's a really good way to organically grow your following. I've seen it be very, very successful on pretty much every profile I've done this on. 
Cool. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a key point is that if the band is commenting, then people really, really, really like that. Yeah, um, really, really joked on it. So let's just talk for a second here. Um, I know we only got like 10 minutes max left here, but um, let's just talk about the profile for a second. So mm -hmm. tips and tricks for profiles. So very first, so um, you want to have a band picture, not a logo, correct? Uh, yeah, something engaging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about the uh, bio for a second. So what would be a good sample bio for a band to have on Instagram, in your opinion? Um, something short, sweet, and to the point. Who you are, what you do, where you're from, style of music you play, that kind of a thing. So we are such and such band from such and such place, and we play thrash metal. Um, and then obviously include a link either a link tree or if you have a scheduling platform like later your link in bio have that set up um one of the two okay so and link tree does is there any difference between for click throughs usually between a link tree and just the regular link in bio they have different purposes Fair. so the link tree is a static page where all of your information lives. So it'll have a link to your YouTube, a link for your Spotify, a link for your Facebook, all of that in one long list. Now later, and their link in bio creates a live linkable feed mm -hmm. so that your posts actually link to somewhere live. So one is a static page that just kind of casually directs people to wherever they feel like going. The link in bio with the live feed directs people where you want them to go. Yeah. So depending on what the post's content is. Well, the good thing about the link tree is you don't have to keep uh, changing the link in bio. You can just like add it to the link tree. Your link in bio. This is a feature for later that creates a completely live feed of your content going directly where you want people to go. That's later. Okay, I've never used later, so I, I'm not I'm not familiar with what you're talking about. So yep. okay, they serve two different purposes. Cool. Well, I'm definitely going to check that one out later. So okay, so now next up on the profile, um, anything else that people should be aware of that they should have on their profile that people are not, as a general rule, doing that you can think of? Talk to band members. I see too many bands that don't have hmm. their band members listed. Um, a good yeah. way to <clears throat> a good way to create engagement with your band is to create engagement with the members because obviously you're going to post different things on your band profile than each of the members are going to do individually and not having the band members actually listed in the bio um, it, it it's a missed opportunity for people to create that emotional investment in your band you know what I mean because mm -hmm. so one of your band members is super nerdy and yeah. they're really into star wars or video games or whatever it is yeah. the fans of yours that are also into those things are really gonna you know want to engage they're going to engage with that member which then creates more of a relationship with your band in general so make sure yeah. you have all of the members tagged cool i never even thought about that that's a fucking brilliant move Corey. um okay so now we've talked about pro no no other profile tips before we move on to the last couple things it's gonna be the biggest one because that's the biggest missed opportunity that i see for profile cool mm -hmm. very very cool um also what about I, I don't know what the name of the things are but you know where you have like um for example uh underneath you got things like you got a little button for like the shop and that type of thing or those things or like different little buttons that you can have is, is that necessary to set up i can't think of the name of that you can set those all up. Um, it's not 100% necessarily necessary, but you can easily set them all up. But obviously, you're going to have to have something to link to to have all of those buttons and have everything um, yeah. really squared away like that. So yeah. nope, just that's take fair. one step at a time and start with the basics. Don't cool. try to get fancy right away. Cool. Okay. So now the next thing. Um, now I know that people are always freaking out, out about the number of followers, but I mean, really, again, um, I want to point out it's the engagement level and the amount of people that you actually talk to or are talking to you versus the number of followers that you have. Uh, one person who's really, really, really good about this is um, like Holly has like a 10% engagement rate or something ridiculous like that on her page. Um, I think she's got 
I think it's like a thousand followers or something like that, but she's getting like, you know, 10% each and every single time. So can you kind of cover really quickly how that something like that, getting a high engagement rate is going to serve you better in the long run versus just a follower count? So a high engagement rate shows that the people who are following you actually mm -hmm. pay attention to what you're doing. So yep. say a label is looking at you and they see that your fans are super engaged. They know that your fans are going to buy merch. They know your fans are going to buy tickets. They know that your fans are real fans and not, um, not fake followers. So that's why the engagement rate is so much more important than just strictly the number of followers. Yeah. And then, and at the same token as like, let's say if you, even if you have like only like, for example, uh, 600 followers, but you're getting like 80 to 90 people or hundred people talking to you every single time or engaging with you. I mean, those are all people that can buy things. And I'd rather have like, you know, a hundred people buying stuff for me or actively engaging with me than, you know, um, doing anything, doing anything else than, than just having like a high follower count. So what other tips and tricks do we want to do with Instagram before we move on? Um, so using relevant hashtags, actually going in and engaging in a meaningful way. Um, I think that those are the, those are like the biggest tips that we can come up with just to get started growing your social media. Oh, 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 another tip. Mm -hmm. Yep. always respond to your comments always yeah every single time all the uh, comments the, yeah define always your comments respond, define responding so, like, if somebody says you know say you post like a new album cover yeah and you know somebody says oh this is amazing artwork just say thank you or yep. say you post that you have a new song coming out and somebody says they're looking forward to it just say we hope you enjoy it just something yeah. along those lines to keep the engagement up because when you go through and you actually respond to your comments it triggers that algorithm to show your post more because more people are commenting because people are going to then come back and respond to you so create a conversation around your band and keep that engagement alive and make it a two-way street because people will get bored with you yeah. if they're always doing the talking like if you're in a conversation with somebody and all you're doing is sitting there and not saying anything how yeah. long will that person continue to talk to you probably not very, very long. long yep not very long at all okay cool so what else do you want to cover with uh instagram i think i'm good on my end do you have more questions i don't think i have any more questions i think the key thing is that people just need to get over their own you know, concern about it and just do something, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people ask too many questions and they don't really do anything. And I think the main thing is as long as you're posting and you're doing your best and, mm -hmm. you know, you're meeting people and you're engaging, you're just going to grow. Cool. So that's yeah. anything. So I guess that's it. Party on, yeah. Corey. Party on, Curtis. <laughs>